when a stranger approaches the town, Survivor Bill forges an unexpected alliance that changes both of their lives. Meanwhile, Joel and Ellie seek Bill's advice as they try to find Tommy. Hello, entertainment enthusiasts. This is Ray, and this is the Fandom Realm. And today I am recapping and reviewing episode number three of The Last of Us. As always, spoilers are involved, so just be aware. So we're going to get into episode three. It's going to be like uh, my previous couple videos. I'm going to go over some things that are in it, although I'm not going to stay perfectly on uh, the video. We're going to start out. We are 10 miles west of Boston. Of course, Joel has started to look for Tommy. He needs to get to that area. He's going to be talking, of course, to Ellie and... Uh, she's given a little bit of attitude about him being upset with her about Tess. She basically says she's not responsible for it. And they're basically just getting some bonding time here. And I thought that was extremely important for this early part of the episode. And to sort of show them starting to learn about each other. And uh, Ellie telling him sort of what was up. I thought that was important as well. Of course, we're going to get some very nice visuals here, and uh, we're going to end up uh, moving into a, it looks like a small garage service station type area, and Joel has some weapons and a stash hidden here, and again, we get some more very good Ellie development time. We're starting to realize that Ellie is new to the world. She hasn't seen a lot of things out there. And so all this is very new to her. So she's exploring, she's finding new things. And I think we have to keep that in mind as we go through the series. Now, of course, she gets this trap door or this hidden door and everybody is yelling at her. Don't go down there. You're an idiot. You're stupid. Stop. And um, so she finds uh, some uh, tampons. Um, a lot of people really uh, have talked about that scene because they've wondered, well, what happens in the zombie apocalypse? Well, of course, while she's down here, there is one of the fungus zombies, and she's going to end up uh, killing it. It is in rock. There's been some type of cave in. And I think it's very interesting after she kills it very violently, she actually doesn't end up telling Joel anything about the zombie. And so with that, um, he's going to have no idea about all of this. Of course, she wants to use the guns that he's hiding, but as he said, there wasn't any ammunition. So uh, they're going to continue their journey. Basically, uh, we look at an airplane that has come down, and that's something that, again, Ellie uh, has no concept of what was flying on the airplane was like. Now, this is very important through here as we're talking about the spread of um, the fungus, and basically Joel is telling Ellie that it spread through flour is what they're thinking and that um, that's why everyone was infected. And um, that goes back to just the very early part of the uh, first episode when she, uh, his daughter Sarah was going to fix some pancakes. Now, of course, we also get this part of the episode where it's revealed that they just would kill civilians um, because civilians, if they were dead, they couldn't spread the disease. So we're back into sept, uh, 2003, and we're going to get introduced to Bill. Uh, Bill is basically a uh, doomsday prepper, and he has set his house up so it looks like he is gone, and the army pulls away, and then Bill's going to realize, hey, I did it. They're gone, and I can do whatever I want. So he's going to be very cautious to start with and come out and check out everything. I really thought this was interesting using a doomsday prepper here and being able to allow us to look at this town after everybody 
literally is gone. I mean, at this point, there's nobody there. There can't be anybody there. The army just took everybody out. But he was prepared for this, and so he goes around uh, the town. Uh, he hooks up his nice little boat and uh, heads around town picking up supplies. So he gets some gas. He gets uh, some things from Home Depot. He ends up turning the gas back on, which who knew it would be, be that easy, but there's nobody there. And I think the big thing for me is, although this is the last of us and the big thing is the Creepers, um, basically with that, we haven't seen very many of them yet. It's focusing on um, the relationship between Joel and Ellie, and it's also focusing uh, partially on uh, you know, what's life like for the people who remain out there, which of course, a lot of people see this as being close to the walking dead. And, you know, we didn't get to see that outside of the first two or three seasons of the walking dead. Now we do get to see, uh, he has, he's prepared. He's got all of this. He's got chickens. He's got some way to get beef. He's got, uh, uh, vegetable gardens. He's also got defenses set up. That'll blow the uh, zombies away if uh, they come near. And so he's very happy with that. He has uh, eventually gotten an electric gate put up, which I think was um, crazy smart. And haven't really seen anything like that put up. You've got to wonder whether it would actually trap a man named uh, Frank. And so uh, Frank is not going to be infected. He's actually trying to get to the Boston quarantine zone. And, you know, he was trapped there. Um, I love this little scene here where they're talking about uh, why uh, Bill would not feed Frank. Because if he goes back and tells everybody that, hey, um, Bill's got food, everybody will will come back uh, and, and try to get food there. Um, we we see that Bill is an excellent chef. He's fixing some very nice food and uh, serving it to Frank. I really enjoy this little uh, series of clips here with the piano, um, partially because Bill told Frank that it wasn't worth anything. And that's one of those things where people don't think about in the apocalypse Things like a uh, ancient piano aren't going to be worth that much. So here's where things start to really, um, I hate to use the saying heat up, um, as we realize uh, we're going to have a relationship between Bill and Frank. And so um, basically here, one of the things, <laughs> the cute little line, and I missed it on the clip, and I'm sorry about that, is that... Frank told Bill that um, he wasn't a whore. He didn't do this for one mil. He was basically going to stay uh, a few more days. So it ends up he stays quite a while longer. We have another jump ahead in time. And it looks like we're having some issues here, especially with just the idea of there's nobody else around. And Frank is wanting some normalcy. He's wanting some stores open that he can go to. And so this is what they're talking about there. And, I mean, can you imagine um, being out there, not having friends, which uh, this is what the clip's coming up here. Um, Bill tells them they have no friends, and then Frank mentions talking to someone on the radio. And, of course, that was Tess. Um, and just imagine for a second um, you know, if it was just you and someone else, um, how lonely that's going to get and how much you're going to want some normalcy, like going to a shop or something like that. So, of course, uh, the next few clips, we see that uh, basically uh, Tess and Joel are going to come and meet Bill and Frank. And it looks like they developed some type of relationship. How close they really were, who knows, but... Joel is offering some help, especially with like the fence. He thinks it's going to be outdated. He thinks eventually there's going to be an attack. And um, while all this is actually going on, of course, Tess and Frank are going to talk about keeping some type of communication to help each other. 
which, you know, that could be very important to both sides. And, um, you know, here's where we get to see Joel foreshadow an attack that's coming later in the episode. So they leave, and now we're getting into 2013. We see that Bill has made some improvements. He put It looked like he put all those cars up as sort of a wall. He's going to have been out running with Frank, I guess, trying to get in shape. And Frank has actually planted a strawberry garden, and he got the seeds from Joel because um, he traded him a small gun, as he uh, tells Bill. So we get a nice moment there, and then we get um, sort of one of those moments that a lot of action going on, or at least a lot of booms and bangs. Um, the facility, the town is attacked. Bill is actually holding it off. He's got some really good booby traps that um, I'm quite appreciative of. And so Bill does get shot, though. And because of that, Frank is trying to help him out. And when this actually cut, I think everybody thought, Bill was uh, dead. Um, so it goes to black. We go 10 years later to 2023, and we see Frank is in a wheelchair. I'm not sure they actually ever said exactly what was wrong with him, but basically what's going to happen here is he's in a situation. Uh, it's sort of like it might be like MS, multiple scler sclerosis. We see Bill taking care of Frank, uh, giving him his medicine here. And, of course, this does start to foreshadow some things to come. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things. Even today, people who have uh, debilitating illnesses like MS, sometimes, you know, they get to the point that we're going to see Frank at in just a few minutes or in just a few seconds. Um, so Frank has actually gotten up, and he's sitting in his wheelchair. It's not what he's supposed to be doing because his feet will all swell up. Uh, he's going to talk to Bill, and he's going to tell him that he did it because this is going to be his last day. Basically, he's going to kill himself today. And uh, he tells him he wants one more good day. He wants toast for breakfast. He wants them to go to the boutique and pick out some clothes to get married. A lot of very interesting things um, that they're going to end up doing here. And so with that, um, we get to see them um, exchanging rings. Um, I thought this was very cute and emotional for them. And um, they're going to end up uh, at dinner. And it looks to me as if Bill has fixed Frank the same dinner they had to start with. Uh, they're going to eat and they're going to get to the point where, um, you know, dinner's over and it's time. Um, Bill stirs in the... Bill stirs in the um, drugs. I'm assuming they're um, some type of uh, depressant sleeping drug, I'm guessing. And uh, he hands the bottle of uh, the glass of wine to Frank, and Frank drinks it. And then we get to see Frank has the realization that that was too easy. And he asks um, Bill if there were pills in the bottles. And Bill tells him enough to kill a horse. And so we get to see here that um, Bill has decided that his life was best with Frank. He doesn't want to live it without him. And so he decided. And so he decided. He was going to end it as well. And so um, Frank doesn't really like that idea. But, you know, what can you do? He's already drank. Um, the, the wine. And so they head off to their bedroom um, and we don't get to see anything else of them. So we are in the present. So it's 2023. So Joel and Ellie come up to the outer gate. Joel knows the code. Presumably Bill has told that to him. Uh, they can't find Bill and Frank. They head into the house uh the door is unlocked uh they're going to start walking around 
Um, Ellie finds a key on a envelope addressed to uh, whoever or Joel. Joel goes back to uh, the bedroom door. It's locked. Um, he can't really get in. Um, Ellie is going to have opened the letter and um, confirms to Joel that they are dead. And then she's going to read the letter. There's a little funny moment where in the letter Bill had written um, a, a laugh into the letter when talking about um, Joel would only be, be the only one that could get by the, the booby traps. So at this point, uh, we get to, I think, what is the real part of this episode, and that is Joel being able to use Bill's truck. And so um, we're going to be able to use that to go cross-country. We've got a long ways to go. Uh, Joel's going to lay down some rules to Ellie, and she agrees. Now, we know she's a little snippy and a, and a, a hard-headed teenager, so I'm sure uh, that's... There's going to be some conflict, but she agrees, um, and um, they get ready to leave. They get some supplies. They go into his gun locker, which I'm going to tell you, I mean, if they're smart, um, they're going to try to leave this place so they can come back to it uh, in the future. But they collect some guns. They collect some other items, and then Ellie realizes there's hot water. Of course, there's hot water. And she goes off to take a shower. And I'm assuming Joel takes the shower. She mentions mentions him taking a shower. And uh, we just don't see it on. We just don't see it on new like a spaceship. Uh, Joel puts her seatbelt on her and they head off. And they're going to end up heading through the gate. Uh, listening, to, listening to uh, Linda Ronstadt, which Joel's quite happy with. He, I guess, considers her uh, an acceptable music to be listening to. And, of course, um, that's fine with me, and we're going to see them drive away. As we do, uh, the, the video pans back into the room of Bill and Frank. Of course, they don't show the bodies or anything. They just show a view out the window, of course, um, they left it open, so there was no smell. And that brings uh, this episode of Last of Us to an end. All right, this is going to be my normal thoughts and reaction portion of the video. And I don't have a lot to say here because I think as the video was going along, I got a lot of my thoughts and reactions out there. I just want to re recap a couple of those. Uh, one big thing is we got a lot of time to build that relationship between Ellie and Joel as they were traveling. It was also important that we get some of the background story of what happened around the world. And of course, uh, Joel was telling Ellie basically what had happened was it got in the uh, food source, basically flour, so bread, pancake mix, anything like that. Uh, could have been infected. And of course, that was extremely important because, of course, if you think back to Sarah and what she was fixing him on his birthday in the first episode, she was going to fix him pancakes and that could have been bad. The other interesting thing with Ellie and Joel here is us seeing Ellie learn about different things. She talked about airplanes and she would have never known what it was like to fly. She got into a car. She'd never been into a truck at the end of the episode. So we've got to understand understand that as we're going along, Ellie is learning things as well. Now, I'll tell you, I loved the Bill and Frank story. I thought they did a very good job. It was very kind and sweet and loving, and it's not something that most people who are game fans, I think, were expecting. This isn't, from what I gather, part of the game, just listening to some people uh, talk, but I think they did a very good job with it. They were very classy with it. Uh, they didn't go super HBO-ish on us, and so I think that's all very good. And then in the end, uh, they treated uh, basically uh, medical-assisted suicide is basically what it ended up being. They treated it with respect in that whole situation. I thought they did a very good job of of it. Now I am going to say, I'm just going to throw 
throw this out there. This episode has been review bombed by a bunch of people and basically because of the Bill and Frank gay episode. And this was an awesome episode. And if if that's why you're going to review bomb something, you probably should be watching other media and other TV and series. There's plenty out there for you. Um, don't try to ruin it for the rest of us. And of course, I also thought it was extremely important showing us Bill and then Bill and Frank, the idea of you know what life would be like if there was no one else around. If literally you were the last person in your town, last person on earth, what would life be like for you? And I think Bill sort of showed what that could have been like, and he was very much prepared for that. And, you know, I think that's a big part of this episode. You know, I've seen a lot of people complain about this episode, calling it filler. Well, you know, we got introduced to a couple of new characters. Uh, We filled in a lot of background information, especially what happened uh, with flour and and the food supply and how everything was infected. Uh, We also uh, introduced the idea that Ellie, there are things she doesn't really know about. We also, most importantly, got Joel a supply of guns and a truck to drive around in. And that's probably the most important part. And I I think they used this episode again to fill in what life is like all around uh, the world and all around the U.S. And of course, they're still building the world for us. Most people have no clue what's going on. And I think it's a very good idea to do things like introduce us to these uh, people who may be surviving. And I'm going to just throw back, you know, when The Walking Dead came out, we saw a little bit of that in the early days when they went to the farm. And I forget the old guy's name now. Noah, I think, maybe. But, you know, when they got to the farm, we saw this is how this this old guy was living and what was going on. And the later years of The Walking Dead, we sort of got away from that. And I think that was a negative. Now, with that being said, I do want to give this episode a grade before we get out of here. And I'm going to have to grade this episode at an A+. Plus. I don't don't know that I would grade it uh, any lower. I'm not sure how. I know a few people have said something about it being slow, but it's meant to be slow. They're developing a lot here. And so definitely A plus for me on this episode, one of the best episodes of TV I've seen in a long time. Now with that, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video and comment below. And I'll see you next time on the Fandom Realm.